Hello, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Cells to Systems. This is a lab manual in Unit 7. Section 1 Human Body Systems Getting the Flu. Every year in the fall and winter, many people get the flu. But Lamar Johnson never seems to get sick. Lamar is 44 years old, and he doesn't think he's ever had the flu. He eats a lot of fruits and vegetables. He wonders if this is why he seems to stay healthy when people around him get sick. Scientists don't know for sure what makes one person catch the flu while another person stays healthy. In 2011, a team of scientists designed an experiment to help them answer this question. They infected 17 healthy people with the flu virus. They then used different tools to study how each person's body responded to the virus. The scientists wanted to see how each person's immune system reacted to the flu virus. The immune system defends the body against infectious organisms and other harmful invaders. Study results. About half of the 17 people who were infected with the flu virus got sick. The results showed that the immune systems of people who didn't have flu symptoms responded in different ways from the immune systems of those people who got sick. Scientists hope that their results will eventually lead to therapies that could one day prevent everyone from getting the flu. Scientists are trying to figure out why some people get sick with the flu and others stay healthy. A complex hierarchy. Understanding how and why people get sick is complicated. One of the reasons it is complex is that the human body is made up of many different parts. For example, it is made up of about 200 different kinds of cells. Each kind of cell has a specific function that contributes to the overall functioning of the body. Some cells digest food. Others attack harmful substances. Still others carry substances such as nutrients or oxygen around the body. Cell specialization. This is called specialization. Instead of every cell trying to do every job, groups of cells are specialized to do one job very well. Each group of specialized cells is more efficient than if each cell worked on its own. For example, white blood cells are part of the immune system. They play an important role in its defensive strategy. There are different kinds of white blood cells, each with a specific function. One kind of white blood cell surrounds and breaks down anything it believes does not belong in the body. It does this in one of two ways. It either absorbs the invader or releases a chemical called an enzyme that will destroy it. Cells that are similarly specialized for a specific function group together to form tissues. Animals, including humans, generally have four kinds of tissues, epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous tissues. Two or more types of tissues that work together to carry out a specific function form structures called organs. Organs are made up of at least two types of tissues, and many are made up of all four. There are many different animal organs, including the heart, liver, lungs, mouth, muscles, and brain. A white blood cell, which is actually yellow, surrounding bacteria, which is orange. Groups of organs that closely interact together to carry out specific functions are called organ systems. The immune system is one organ system. Other organ systems include the circulatory, respiratory, and digestive systems. Each system is composed of trillions of cells and keeps the organism functioning properly. Every organ system requires that each of its parts function properly in order to perform its job. Organ systems also depend on other organ systems to function. A possible connection between food and illness. Let's go back to the immune system's ability to fight off the flu virus. Lamar's hypothesis is that he never gets the flu because he eats plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Fresh fruits and vegetables have plenty of antioxidants in them. 
Antioxidants are molecules that can help to protect cells from becoming damaged. When Lamar eats, his digestive system kicks in. The digestive system breaks down food into energy that can be used by cells in the body. It includes the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, liver, and the pancreas. The digestive system breaks down complex food molecules into single glucose molecules that can be absorbed by cells in the small intestine. These cells transport the molecules into the bloodstream so that other cells in the body can use them. The excretory system removes the waste. One of the scientists who conducted the flu study said that having a lot of antioxidants in your bloodstream may be what activated the immune systems of people who didn't get sick. More research needs to be done to prove this link though. Here's a diagram showing that atoms combine to form molecules, molecules combine to form cells, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, organs group together to form organ systems. Working together. The bloodstream that carries nutrients throughout the body is part of the circulatory system. The circulatory system distributes blood, oxygen, and nutrients to the body cells and carries away waste products. It includes the heart, which is the body's hardest working organ. The heart beats approximately 100,000 times every day. It also includes blood vessels. Blood vessels are hollow tubes that serve as the body's highways. They circulate blood from the heart to every region in the body and back again. Blood is a liquid connective tissue. It travels thousands of miles in blood vessels. It carries nutrients, water, oxygen, and waste products to and from the body cells. The heart is also a muscle. Because of this, it is also part of the muscular system. The muscular system enables an organism to move. It is responsible for all of your body's movement. This includes movements that you direct, including lifting your arms or walking. It also includes the beating of your heart and the movement of blood through your body. Muscle tissues are made of cells that can contract or shorten and relax or lengthen to move your body parts. The process that breaks down complex food molecules into single glucose molecules requires oxygen. The respiratory system brings in oxygen from the environment that cells need to function and releases carbon dioxide, a waste product. It is made up of airways, lungs, and muscles of respiration. The circulatory system carries the oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. The integumentary system provides a tough physical barrier from the environment. Finally, the nervous system has to coordinate and control all of this activity. It is made up of the brain, spinal column, sensory organs, and neurons. These runners move because of interactions among the different systems. Human organ systems. System, major components, primary functions. Circulatory system. Heart, blood vessels, blood transports blood, nutrients, oxygen, waste, and water throughout the body. Digestive system, mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, liver, pancreas, processes food and turns it into usable energy the body cells need to function. Excretory system, kidneys, uterus, I'm sorry, ureters, urinary bladder, urethra, removes waste from the body. Immune system, white blood cells, thymus, lymph nodes, defends the body against infectious organisms and other harmful invaders. Integumentary system, skin, hair, nails, provides a tough physical barrier that protects the body from chemicals, viruses, and other physical damages. Muscular system, 700 muscles, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac tissue. Enables the organism to move by contracting, shortening, and relaxing, lengthening the muscles. Nervous system, 
brain, spinal column, sensory organs, and neurons. Gathers environmental data from the senses and controls inputs and outputs of other organ systems to keep the organism's entire body functioning. Respiratory system. Airway, lungs, muscles of respiration. Enables an organism to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide between blood and the atmosphere. Works closely with the circulatory system. Section two, human body cells. Painting cell structures. David Goodsell is a scientist. He is also an artist. He has combined his love of cells and art to create watercolor paintings of different cells. His work is unique because it shows the molecules that make up different parts of each cell. These molecules are so tiny that they cannot be seen with just a microscope. David's paintings usually represent cellular structures magnified one million times. This is the magnification necessary to see the different molecules that make up a cell. David uses information from several different tools to help him create his paintings. He sometimes spends weeks researching a molecule before he draws it. Understanding the structure of cells and the molecules that make them up is important for scientists like David who study cells. It's like understanding any piece of machinery, David said in an interview with the California Museum Explatorium. You have to know what it looks like and how its different parts interact with each other, uh, with other parts, the other molecules. Variety of human body cells. Remember that the human body is made up of trillions of cells. There are 200 kinds of specialized cells. Each kind of cell is structured in such a way that it can perform a particular job. This is one of David's paintings. It shows parts of a red blood cell. The purple is the cell membrane. The red shows the proteins that make up most of the cell. Cell structure and function. Let's begin with the red blood cell. Red blood cells are part of the circulatory system. Their primary job is to carry oxygen to all of the cells in the body. They also return carbon dioxide to the lungs. The carbon dioxide is released into the environment when you exhale. Red blood cells look like donuts without a hole in the middle. This shape makes it easy for gases to move into and out of the cell because they have a large surface area. Red blood cells are also flexible. This helps them move through the body's blood vessels, some of which are narrower than a human hair. Lacking a nucleus. Red blood cells are unique among cells because they do not have a nucleus. A nucleus takes up space and increases the mass of the cell. Red blood cells benefit from not having a nucleus. A nucleus would mean there would be less space available for carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide, and the increased mass would make the heart have to work harder to move blood throughout the body. Red blood cells move through blood vessels. Muscle cells have a very different structure from red blood cells. This is because muscle cells have a different function. Every process that requires movement in your body occurs because of the 700 muscles that make up the muscular system. Muscles always work in pairs. As one muscle contracts or shortens, its pair relaxes or lengthens. A muscle is a tissue made up of many cells called fibers. Muscle fibers are long and thin, which allows the cells to change size drastically when they contract and relax. They have a lot of mitochondria, which provide a constant supply of energy to the cells during movement. There are three kinds of muscle tissue, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Cardiac muscle cells are only found in the heart. Cardiac muscle tissue is involuntary. This means it contracts without conscious control. It is strong because it is responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. Smooth tissue is involuntary tissue that lines the inside of organs like the stomach, intestines, and blood vessels. It is much shorter than the skeletal tissue. It has a smooth, uniform appearance when viewed under the microscope. 
skeletal muscle cells move parts of the bone closer to each other. Skeletal muscle tissue is the only voluntary muscle tissue in the body. These cells are long. They are made up of many long fibers that can contract and relax with great force. Skin cells are different from both red blood cells and muscle cells. They are part of the integumentary system. They work to protect the body by providing a tough physical barrier. Skin is actually the body's largest organ. It is made up of different layers of cells that work to protect your body. Here's a picture of cardiac muscle cells, smooth muscle cells, skeletal muscle cells, and skin cells, which are layered. Becoming specialized, red blood cells, muscle cells, skin cells, and all of the other cells that make up a human came from a single cell that formed when an egg cell from a female and a sperm cell from a male joined together. That single cell contains a full set of genetic information. That single cell begins to reproduce. It develops into a type of cell called a stem cell. Stem cells are unspecialized. This means they cannot perform the specific functions of the body. Instead, their primary job is to create specialized cells that have specific structures for carrying out different functions. This process of forming specialized cells is called cell differentiation. During cell differentiation, cells develop the specific shapes, structures, and characteristics that they will need to perform their specific functions in the body. Scientists still don't know exactly what causes a stem cell to turn into a specialized cell. In embryos, cell differentiation happens depending on where the stem cell is located. For example, those stem cells on the outer layer of the embryo form skin cells. Cell differentiation is how a single cell can become a complex organism, like a human being, made up of trillions of specialized cells. When a stem cell divides, each new cell can become another type of cell with a more specialized function. Section three, sensing the world. Hearing music as colors. When Caitlin Hova hears music, she sees colors. Each note has a different color that she can physically see. This is because Caitlin has synesthesia. Synesthesia is a condition that causes two or more senses to cross. A sense is how animals get information about the outside world. Human senses include sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. People also have other senses, including the sense of balance, pain, and temperature changes. The nervous system takes an inf in information through the senses. It processes the information and then produces a reaction, such as making your muscles move or causing you to feel pain. Sometimes the information is stored as memory. Memory is the process of retaining information over time. Synesthesia occurs because of how the body processes the information gathered by the senses. Structure of the nervous system. Understanding how senses can become crossed begins with the structure of the nervous system. The nervous system is made up of different parts, including the brain, the spinal cord, nerve cells, also called neurons. The brain is the part of the body that interprets all of the information the senses receive. It is made up of about 1 billion neurons. Some people with synesthesia see specific colors when they read letters or numbers. This is a picture of the nervous system. And here is a picture of the nerve cells or neurons. Processing information. Your body gathers information from the environment with structures called sensory receptors. Sensory receptors are specialized to detect stimuli. A stimulus is a signal from the environment that provides some form of information. Some sensory receptors are simple nerve endings. These sensory receptors are part of a sensory neuron. 
others our entire sense organs. Remember that organs are made up of two or more kinds of tissues. Sense organs are made up of nervous tissue and other kinds of tissue, depending on the kind of sense organ it is. The nose, eyes, ears, and mouth are all sense organs. These sense organs transmit information to sensory neurons through nerve impulses. Sensory neurons then send nerve impulses from the receptors to the spinal cord and then to the brain. The brain interprets the information to make sense of the environment at that moment. The information can also be stored as memories. Kinds of receptors. There are different categories of receptors depending on the kind of information they gather from the environment. Some sensory receptors respond to changes in temperature. These receptors are called thermo, thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors, receptors are how you detect heat and cold. The peripheral nervous system. A stimulus leads to a sensory receptor to nerve fibers and send signals along sensory nerves. To the spinal cord, the brain senses and interprets stimulus and that's the central nervous system. Smell and taste. Some receptors respond to chemicals in the environment. These receptors are called chemoreceptors. Taste and smell depend on these kinds of receptors. In people, taste receptors are found in taste buds. Adults have about 3,000 taste buds, mostly on the tongue. When we eat, foods stimulate the taste receptors. There are at least four kinds of taste, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. A fifth kind of taste called umami exists for certain kinds of food. It is sometimes described as savory. Taste buds for each of these tastes are found on the tongue. For example, the tip of the tongue is most sensitive to sweet tastes. The back part of the tongue is most sensitive to bitter tastes. Taste buds generate nerve impulses based on the kind of tastes in a particular food. Those nerve impulses are sent to the brain. Smelling information. Smell is another sense that depends on chemoreceptors. In humans, these receptors are found in the nose. Odors are made up of different molecules. When these molecules reach the chemoreceptors in your nose, certain neurons are activated. Those neurons communicate with the brain, which interprets the information as a specific smell. Sometimes a specific smell can bring to mind a particular person or a place. This is because the part of the brain that receives information from chemoreceptors in the nose is closely connected to the part of the brain responsible for emotions and memory. Taste buds are a kind of chemoreceptor. The nose has chemoreceptors. Hearing and touch. Some sensory receptors are called mechanoreceptors. They can respond to mechanical forces in the environment. These forces physically change the shape of a cell or tissue, such as by vibration, touch, or pressure. For example, when an object makes a noise, it sends vibrations through the air. There are many different kinds of sounds, but all sounds make vibrations. These vibrations move through the different parts of your ear. This is how you hear sound. Your ears, along with your eyes and your brain, also help with your sense of balance. Neurons and touch. Touch is another sense that relies on mechanoreceptors. Your skin has many sensory neurons that can detect touch. Some parts of your body are more sensitive to touch than others. For example, your back has a lower density of touch receptors than other parts of your body. This means that one neuron covers a relatively large area. Any touch that occurs within that one neuron's area will trigger the same neuron. If your back is touched in two different places within one neuron's area, it will feel like a single touch. This is true with your fingertips because they have a high density, this isn't true with your fingertips because they have a high density of touch receptors. This means there are more neurons packed within a small space. As a result, you will feel separate touches within a much smaller area. 
This diagram shows a part of the skin with a lot of touch receptors and one with fewer touch receptors. And here's a diagram of an ear. And there's the mechanoreceptor, which allows for hearing. Sight. Other sensory receptors respond to light. These receptors are called photoreceptors. Light-sensitive cells in humans are located in the back of the eye. These photoreceptors are known as rods and cones. The cone cells are sensitive to color. The rod cells are responsible for peripheral and night vision. When light hits the eyes, rods, and cones, the photoreceptors send signals through the optic nerve to the brain. Like many animals, humans have two eyes. Our eyes have overlapping visual fields. This means that each eye looks at an object from a different angle. This is different from horses and rodents, which have eyes on opposite sides of their heads. The benefit of having overlapping visual fields is that we can see depth. This allows us to determine how far away objects are. Each eye views objects from a slightly different angle. The brain combines the information gathered from each eye to determine how far away the object is. Crossed senses in synesthesia. Scientists are still exploring the causes of synesthesia. Some believe it happens when the pathway of sensory information from one sense gets crossed or merged with the pathway of sensory information from another sense. So when Caitlin Hova hears music, the information taken in by her ears could perhaps get crossed with the part of her brain that receives information from her eyes and associates the musical notes with different colors. This is true of people who see numbers as colors. Scientists have used brain imaging to see what happens in the brain when exposed to black numbers on a white background. For people who don't have synesthesia, only the part of their brain associated with numbers becomes active. However, when some people with synesthesia look at the same black numbers on a white background, the color area of their brain also becomes active. I learned a lot reading Cells to Systems, and I hope that you did too. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.